Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all keeping well. My name's Liz, his name is Harley. He decided he wanted to sneak in and be part of the video. So, last week we took a little trip to Scotland and this week we are back in England and today's video is going to be all about Stephen of Blore. <laughs> I still can't pronounce his name. I can't pronounce it at all. It's going to be all about his wife, Matilda of Boulogne. And oh, you're going to like her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to know more about Matilda, please do stay tuned. See right where you are. Enjoy. <laughs> achievements of King Stephen's wife Matilda of Boulogne have been overlooked by that of their enemy Empress Matilda. Queen Matilda was the woman who raised an army to rescue her husband and defend the English throne. Matilda was the only child of Eustace Count of Boulogne and Mary of Scotland and she was born around 1103. Matilda was one of the most desirable princesses in Europe through Matilda having royal Saxon and Scottish blood and Matilda's inheritance that would come on the death of her father, the county of Boulogne and the lands with it. When Matilda was aged two, King Henry I of England, Matilda's uncle, had her betrothed to her cousin Stephen of Bloy, who was grandson to William the Conqueror. In 1125, her father became a monk and he ceded Boulogne and the English lands or well, estates to Matilda. Shortly after the death of her father, Henry I then arranged for her marriage to take place to Stephen in Maidstone. Now, Stephen, who was the richest magnate in England with now, with Boulogne, Stephen gained the control of the shortest channel crossing to England and the merchant shipping that came with it. The marriage was a happy one. There was a lot of evidence of the affection the couple had for one another. And together, Matilda and Stephen had five children. They were Marie, Eustace, Count of Boulogne, um, Baldwin, Matilda and William, Earl of Surrey. Henry I, he had many illegitimate children, but only one remaining legitimate child who was Empress Matilda. Henry's legitimate son and heir um, died in the white ship and Henry's sole heir was now Matilda, who was also known as Maud. Henry had his barons swear acknowledging Matilda as his successor to the throne and these barons included Stephen. But when Henry died in 1135, Stephen broke that oath and he seized the throne and was proclaimed king on the 22nd of December. Matilda of Boulogne arrived in England in January 1136. Now Matilda had received a lavish coronation at Westminster Abbey on Easter Day or Easter Sunday. Matilda had proved to be a strong and resourceful queen. She was feisty and energetic and she was tireless in her support in her ineffective husband whom she had far exceeded in capabilities. Matilda had good judgment. She also won, pra un won praise, not only for her unwavering loyalty to Stephen, but also for her honor, courage, and diplomacy, and for having a manly heart in a woman's body as one contemporary chronicler had written. 
Stephen had trusted Matilda for her political judgment and he relied on her support. Stephen and Matilda also shared religious interest and it strengthened the bond between them. They had given their eldest daughter Marie to God as a nun and they had founded abbeys at Furness and Faversham. Matilda also established the Royal Hospital of St Catharines and she was a benefactress to many religious houses and she also helped establish the Knights Templar in England. Empress Matilda was battling to gain control of Normandy as a stepping stone to invade England and wrestle the crown from her cousin Stephen. The support base for Matilda had broadened when her illegitimate half-brother Robert, 1st Earl of Gloucester, was supporting her cause. In 1138, Robert sent an invading army across from Normandy to England intended to land at Dover, which Robert had held. Now, King Stephen's presence was desperately needed to quell a rebellion in the West. So Stephen, having every confidence in his wife's ability, he appointed Matilda to regain Dover. Matilda had faced a huge challenge. Dover Castle was a formidable stronghold on its massive cliff commanding the sea. But Matilda had considerable resources at her command. Matilda besieged Dover with a large army on the landward side. She ordered her men of Boulogne to blockade it by sea with a great fleet of ships where they closed the narrow strip, preventing the garrison from receiving any supplies. Matilda's strategy um, had Dover surrendered to Matilda and she was commanding her men herself who laid siege to the castle. Robert of Gloucester's men was forced to surrender to Queen Matilda. Empress Matilda invaded England in 1139 and civil war between her and her cousin Stephen broke out but neither of them had superior strength a situation that many barons had taken full advantage of the anarchy. Queen Matilda had proved to be a formidable opponent. She was just as brave and determined as her rival. However, she wasn't arrogant or dictatorial as Empress Matilda and despite operating as an effective female warlord, now, as a result, Queen Matilda had avoided alienating those who disapproved of women breaking through the boundaries imposed on them by the male-dominated society. In February 1141, King Stephen was captured at Lincoln and imprisoned in chains on the orders of Empress Matilda. Queen Matilda raced through Kent, raising troops um, with William of Yeeps, Yeppies, Yeppies, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his surname, who was loyal to her and her husband. In Stephen's absence, Matilda took it upon herself with the royal authority. Empress Matilda had secured the support of the church and Stephen's treacherous brother, Henry Bishop of Winchester. Matilda was acknowledged as the Lady of the English by most of England apart from Kent. Matilda needed to win over London, who had strongly supported her cousin. Now, Matilda needed London for her cause so she could be crowned. And finally, London opened its gates to her, but the mood was hostile. Matilda was not liked for her arrogance and punitive demands for money, and it angered London's citizens. 
Matilda exploited the unrest and she never let anyone forget that their anointed king was in chains. Queen Matilda has sent representatives to the empresses um, begging for the empress to release her husband from the filthy dungeon. She had even offered herself as a hostage in exchange along with castles and riches. Queen Matilda had even promised that when Stephen was freed, she would ensure Stephen would relinquish his claim to the English throne. But her words failed. So she marched to London at the head of an impressive army. Although she didn't take part in the fighting, she did order her forces to rage most furiously around the city with plunger and arson, violence and the sword. The people of London watched in terror as the surroundings were ravaged. Queen Matilda's troops laid siege to the tower. The citizens sent messengers to reason with her. Empress Matilda was driven out of the city of London. Empress Matilda was forced out of London and Bishop Henry had abandoned her. In Matilda's retaliation, she had her forces besieged Winchester. Henry had vowed to forsake her cause and help liberate his brother, King Stephen. Queen Matilda had marched on Winchester, her army strengthened by 1,000 angry Londoners, Matilda arrived at the bishop's castle that was under siege by the empress's forces and the siege lasted for nearly two months until disease and starvation pushed the empress to escape. The empress's forces were routed by the queen's army Robert of Gloucester was captured, costing the Empress's advantage. Matilda could do nothing without her chief minister. Queen Matilda ensured that Robert was treated most honourably. On, on, honourably. <laughs> was treated with the utmost respect. There we go. <laughs> After many tough negotiations, an agreement was reached. King Stephen was to be restored and Robert to be released on the 1st of November, 1141. Stephen was freed. Stephen and his Queen Matilda entered L London triumphantly. In 1142, Empress Matilda occupied Oxford. England was plunged back into civil war. Stephen had received the city whilst his queen raised reinforcements for him. Empress Matilda made a daring escape. She dressed herself in white being camouflaged against the snow. Although her cause was lost, she still didn't give in. Empress Matilda only gave in when her biggest supporter, her brother, Robert of Gloucester, died in 1147. Her other supporters had lost heart. The Empress left England. Her cause was now taken up by her son, Henry, who was determined to have the crown for himself. In April 1152, Queen Matilda was visiting Headingham Castle in Essex, where she fell ill with a fever. King Stephen was summoned where he stayed by her side until she died on the 3rd of May, aged 49. Matilda didn't live to see the end of the war. Matilda's epitaph reads, if ever woman deserves to be carried by the hands of angels to heaven, it is this holy queen. King Stephen died in 1154 and he was buried beside his queen, 
Matilda at Faversham. And there's Matilda of Boulogne's story. She was quite the woman. And I've said it before and I say it again, you always find that behind every king there is one hell of a strong woman. And she proved to be Stephen's strong woman. I actually, I really enjoyed researching for Ma of Matilda of Boulogne. I, I find, uh, I don't want it to come across that I'm making that Empress Matilda is the bad guy. She, it wasn't her fault, it was how she was raised. She was doing it in a Norman way and she, I will get to her. She will have her own story, so don't worry. She also deserves it because, damn, even she was quite the woman she really was so but I just want everyone to have their story to be told and Queen Matilda Matilda of Boulogne she very very formidable woman and I imagine she at that time I think she must have been quite the inspiration but there we are let me know what you think let me know what you think of all of this are you still Empress Matilda? Oh yeah, she's good. Or are you leaning more towards someone else? Let me know what you think. And thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. And let's get this channel growing. Let's reach more and more history lovers like yourself. So please do keep doing all the good stuff. Keep liking and sharing and subscribing because you're all amazing and keep being amazing. I will see you next video. Be good, take care. And Holly says bye.